just bought a robot. You guys didn't even send me a brochure of questions. Like, I didn't even practice. Y'all just do this on random, huh? Exactly. This is natural. Well, this honesty. Is, honesty. <coughs> this, is, this, is, this is, like, real. You know, okay, look. No bloopers. So, no this serious, guys. So, just to give you guys a little bit of opening. So, um, so... Uh, not that long ago, I want to say maybe two weeks ago or something like that. Um, this young lady that I follow, she posted up a post about Justin Baldoni, um, who you know you might know him from like Jane the Virgin, like the actor, director, and he just did this TED talk basically talking about you know, um, am I man enough, right, or man enough? So you know, um, she kind of went ahead and she put um, she put the conversation on her on her IG. And she kind of stated, she basically said, like, you know, I don't usually post these kind of things because I don't have the platform or the audience or the voice, um, you know, to, to reach, like, a big audience, I guess is what she was trying to say. But she said, you know, food for thought, you know, maybe it might impact you, maybe not, and it did. You know, um, since then, I kind of did, like, my, my research, you could say, you know, and <clears throat> basically what Justin Baldoni has done is that he's just trying to get, like, a group of men and kind of have these conversations that... You know, men don't really have, right? What is man enough? You know, what is be oh be a man? You know, what what does that mean? You know, and just kind of hit certain topics that girls usually talk about within themselves. But if guys will talk about them, it's seen is deemed as like weird, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so essentially, you know, I kind of want to be able to hit certain topics or different topics. But right now, man enough, right? So you know, my yeah. So I grew up in a Hispanic household, right? Mm -hmm. Like most of you guys did. You know, so being man enough or whatever, um, is is kind of a thing I guess that like Hispanics have, like this kind of machismo thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, okay, so the man works, he provides, um, you know, and the woman, she's like the cook, the the clean of the house, you know, the man's like the the big dog, you know. In the Bible it says that the man is the lead, you know, the head, yeah. all that stuff, right? Which I, I completely understand. But you know, when you kinda start to really, you know, uncover this, you know, as guys, we don't um necessarily have emotional conversations you know what i'm saying like, no we don't talk. yeah we don't mm -hmm. I, I mean at least as much as we should because you know maybe you have this like this little thing about like nah man i don't want my homeboys to be like ah oh, cut that gay shit out you know like mm -hmm. a lot of us a lot of us say and um sorry like a lot of us say <laughs> yeah man, i'm still dying you know what if if i can actually elaborate on yeah. this whole uh, me and him we were taking this uh class it was uh saving it's called saving your Saving your marriage before it starts. That's what mm -hmm. it's called. Simbus. That was the acronym for that. And um, it was um, it was a it was a class for like you know how you know before you get married just uh, like you know some tips and all yeah. that stuff. And uh, you know what it said about men is that we like uh, to experience fun things. I like we like to experience new things, and women are. Um, they like, you know, like more like the emotion and, you know, the emotional conversations. What I'm trying to say is that I think we're wired like that. Like we're, we're wired for experiences. We're wired to be the provider. Um, a lot of us are, are really wired like that. So um, um, I think it's, it's just really inside of us, like inside of our actual being that we kind of, most of us want to be the man. Right. Of the relationship. Right. I just think it's like, you know, you kind of want to provide and all that stuff. Right, right, just, right. Um, I just think that you shouldn't take it as um, the whole. Am I mad enough? I don't know if you should take it to extremes and like, well, try okay. to be always. Let's, let's break it up to you. What does the the I guess the phrase "Are you mad enough"? What does that mean to you? Like, same what is Hispanic, being mad enough yeah, to you? What does that mean Hispanic to you? Hispanic thought that you know we have to work hard. We got to bring home the money, and the wife has to uh, you know raise the the kids. The kids. Basically. That that. But, so you will define being man enough as if you can provide for your wife and your kids, mm -hmm. and you can, you know, be the hardworking man mm -hmm. in the house, then you think you're man enough. Like, you think you're a man. That's, that's what make, that's yeah. what it's, that, that, that's how you feel, right? Yeah. What about you? So someone that's honorable, someone that's respectful, uh, someone that's wise, uh -huh. someone that's strong, you know, and strong, yes. I don't mean, like, you don't cry, I mean that there's strength in, in emotion, too. Mm -hmm. Someone that, there is. that Someone that's honest and vulnerable. Because I think a lot of times, you know, I grew up, I, I, I think I could literally count with one hand and I wouldn't use all the fingers. Yeah. How many times I saw my dad cry my whole life? Yeah. So I grew up with this idea, whether it was unsaid, I don't think they ever said it to me, yeah. that men could not cry. Men could not be, show weakness. That's true. Right? And, and so I, as I grew up, bro, when I was little, I, I didn't cry at all. Even when they, went, when they were beating me, I was so prideful, I wouldn't let them see tears. Yeah. Right? Now I'm older and I cry way more than I ever did when I was young. 
Yeah. Right? Because uh, the whole idea of, you know, men don't cry was, to me, it was like, yo, now it's nonsense. Like, right. you know, it's okay to be vulnerable. You know, there's, yeah. a, there's a beauty and a strength when you can admit that you're hurt or you're broken. Right, right, right. right? And, and so I think that that, <laughs> I think being honest with yourself and with others is yeah. what makes you a man. Yeah. You know, like, and, and I, I actually agree, you know, um, I think that, like, for me growing up, it was the same thing, you know, my dad is a very serious guy, you know, like, um, and I've seen, you know, I've seen my dad laugh, seen him enjoy himself, but for the most part, that's a very serious person. He's mm-hmm. not a talkative person. He's not a friendly mm-hmm. person. He's a very, you know, very serious guy. So for me, you know, growing up, I would, I, I'm, and even to this day, I'm still on the, ah, stop with that gay shit, you know, like, stop with the feeling feelings because, yeah. you know, I find almost like a, like a, like this weirdness with, you know, like this mm-hmm. weird relationship with mm-hmm. that, like, you know, like, look, like when my guys, you know, I hug you guys, mm-hmm. it's all love. And I've learned that from you guys, you know what I mean? Because normally I would feel uncomfortable, like, just ha- hugging people mm-hmm. and stuff like that, you know, because it's not, that, that that was never showed. So for me, mm-hmm. you know, what I saw as being a man is someone who's serious, someone who's, you know, hardworking. That's definitely what I saw from my dad nonstop, right, like, hardworking. Mm-hmm. But for me, like, you know, to me, a man and how a man should act is someone who's going to be serious and still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I remember, like, you know, being in middle school and high school, and that was my, that's like my... Like, and mentally, every time I'm walking the halls, I'm walking, I'm just like, yo, you got to be serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to look like you're the yeah, man. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm going to walk with my chest up and I'm going to look serious. And that's, that was my mentality. You know what I mean? Because that's, that's what I experienced. Mm-hmm. I didn't experience, yeah, like, yeah. you know, men just, like, laughing and being like, ha ha. You know, like, I, I'm always, and even growing up, like, watching action movies with my dad, you know, the guys that play there are, like, alpha guys, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, we have this thing where, like, alpha males were, like, you know... We are not gonna let nobody see me smile, right? Like Kevin Hart had the joke about how thugs yeah. laugh, right? It's like, huh, 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 right? Like you get back to serious. You gotta so, be the boss, right? So you know, for me, like the whole man enough thing, you know that that whole picture of what it is to be a man was that, you know what I mean? Like okay, yeah, you're gonna work hard, you're gonna provide, but you're gonna be serious. You know, you're not gonna be seen as laughing or crying or not, because that's definitely considered weakness, right? So that, and that's not something that my dad told me, it's just something that, you know, I just grew up, like, listening to him, like, oh, damn. So, you know, now, like, we're here, and, you know, we get to, like, you know, this usually starts around middle school, we get to, like, that locker room talk, mm-hmm. right? Where now being man enough isn't about necessarily, like, your character as a person, but it's, like, what what, what are you tagging? What are you tapping? What are you smashing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how many girls are you getting? You know what I'm saying? Like, you slapping ass in the hallway, like, what are you doing? You know I mean, that's what starts to make you man enough from those young ages. Like, that, I, like I've experienced, you know, like, you know, for me, I was like very into church from middle school, high school, like deeply. So for me, I always uh, abstain myself from, you know, any of those things. So I would hear that all the time. Like, oh, bro, like you're a virgin. Like, what the hell? Like, how can you be a virgin? Like, yo, you could get girls or, yo, how can you be a virgin? Everybody's fucking, you know, mm-hmm. right? Like, so you have this thing where like, okay, so what's going to make me like, you know, cool with the guys, it's gonna make me like the alpha male, like, oh, if I smash a bunch of girls, right? And I talk about it too, right? Like, that's kind of the mentality that a lot of guys grew up with, right? And, you know, like, I don't know, like, so, <clears throat> I guess if I could ask, like, what, what are your experiences with that? Like, you know, like, 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 have you, have you thought about it? Like, yo, it's like the whole locker room talk, because we have locker room talk, even now, but with most guys, like, mm-hmm. we'll talk about it or whatever, but have you thought about what that does for girls or what that means for them? You know what I mean? Like, or, or that mentality of, oh, yo, if I'm smashing a bunch of girls and this is what I'm doing, and I'm the man. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. And it, it really makes you an outcast, man. Um, I got to tell you, from from most of my life, you know, when I hang out with a lot of guys, it's like, you know, when, when you got, like, you know, some homeboys, maybe, like, let's say homeboys at work or homeboys in your university mm-hmm. or homeboys in your household or you go to the park and hang out with guys. It's, it's like that, you know, when a lot of guys are together, it's all about, like, how much girls you get, and, you know, that's what it is. That's that locker room, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, locker room, you, you can have it at work, <laughs> you can have it at school, and uh, me, personally, I'm an outcast with that type of stuff, like, you know, um, that we talking about getting girls and all that stuff, and I think that if I put myself with them, then it's going to be like that whole Christian saying, you know, you put apples and you surround it with bad apples. That's just yeah. a saying yeah, yeah. that I think is, is really true. So yeah. I try to separate myself from that stuff. And um, yeah, um, that's just me. You know, it's, um, I'm in a relationship and I know my relationship is going to require me and that person being best friends. You know, me and him are being <coughs> best friends and me having to do little things and stay away from those conversations yeah. with other guys like that um, it's, it's it's hard work but yeah. you know it's it's definitely uh, yeah. nine to six you know it's it's hard work but 
I think when two people just love each other, they try to do whatever they can to make sure everything is always yeah. like that. So um, I try to stay away from locker room talk, man. Um, is what I can tell you. Yeah. Is 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 going on? Like, like, from, like from your experience yeah. and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I grew up with the same kind of background, you know, this Christian home yeah, background. Yeah. So. Like for me, I wasn't always like for, that. For me, there's a culture shock. <laughs> I love, him. I love like, you, Hama. There's a culture shock. Like oh, that's my god. Like I want to be like bro. you when I grow up, bro. Yeah. I wasn't always like that. I, I ain't even gonna lie. Like, yeah. you know, come on, bro. We're, <laughs> we're guys. We're we're yeah. all, you know we're brothers. You know? Yeah. Nah, man. I, mean, I respect that. Trouble. It does develop. That's maturity. <laughs> we're troublemakers, bro. It's facts. Well, I mean, for me, it was, it was like like this conflict where at home, you know, the whole value was. You have one woman, you have a woman for your whole life, yeah. right? And then you have in society and with your friends. It's like the whole, like, what do you mean you haven't done this? And what do you mean you never experienced yeah. that? What do you mean? And so you start feeling like maybe you're not man enough because you haven't done what they're, they're doing. Yeah. Right. But the problem is I realized that then when I started engaging in what they were doing, then I started looking at women like they were less. Because mm. it's like, hold up, women, and it's like your favorite saying, right? Women are just, you know, pleasures, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's and I... Like, uh, Wait, the so the Jay's Jay's say, saying is that I um you don't seek women as meaningful pursuits but as um temporary pleasures. Yeah, exactly. Which is like, you know, it's it's a deep it's yeah. a deep thing. Yeah, so and so you know, you start looking at, at what women can do for me. And and you know, it wasn't all James Bond movie was that. That's Casino Royale. Casino Royale. Yeah. yeah. So um I started realizing that, that it was affecting the way I, I saw girls my age specifically. Yeah. Right? Like if you're a woman, I'm gonna respect you. If you're a young kid, I'm going to respect you. But if you're my age, you become, whether I'm conscious about it or not, whether I use that word or not, it's just another thought. Right, right. Because that's how everybody around me saw women. Oh, but you can't trust these girls. You can't trust these, all right? Right, 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 right. So, you know, I started building in me that insecurity where I, I can't really have a relationship with a girl because I can't trust that girl. Mm-hmm. And it started affecting that. And, it, and I had to realize that it wasn't them, it was me. Yeah. I had, you know, I had let my view of what I thought women were and what I thought I was supposed to be, yeah. you know, affect the way I saw everybody else. So that messed me up a lot. I had to realize and realize, yo, this is not them. It's your fault. You have insecurities. You know? Well, well, you know, and I like that you got there. So look, so both of you guys, you know, you guys lived your lives. You guys are um, tw- both 24. So, you know, you guys also yeah, both about did. to be a porter, Chris. Yeah, yeah. man. We Found made it, it man. I'm all, well, I'm we'll make it. <laughs> well, you close it. Yours is me. No, April, right? Yeah, April. Yeah, that shit coming up. I think right coming there. Coming up. Right so, but right? coming up like a little. Like. 25. So, look. So, but that's, it's like this. So, you're about to be 25. You're about to be 25 in August. You know, you guys are both in very serious relationships where you guys see this as like a, you know, like more than just a girlfriend to me, right? More than just, you know, it's grown men talking, in other words, right? So, do you guys feel like these girls in your lives or these women in general have changed your perception of what it means to be a man or like what it means to be this manly figure that society oh puts. man yeah man because um if you're asking me man um i was just at this point in my life where i was like man i i want to make this much money so i can drive this luxurious car and i can go get this nice apartment and i can um, go, you know, get with a lot of women and, you know, go to the club and spend as much money. And it went from understanding that, okay, in life I need, you know, somebody. Mm -hmm. You need a partner in life. So, um, you need to just start, you know, learning how to sacrifice things. And man, through my sacrifices, man, you, I found like the, the light. Right, right. In my opinion, I found that, man, I can finally trust somebody. I can try to earn somebody's tr- trust and just, you know, um, <clears throat> life is about commitment and it's about mm-hmm. hard work. So that's, that's where I'm at right now. You know, I understand that it's hard work I understand, and I love it, yeah. you know, because um, she respects me, she trusts me so much and she's given me so much that I trust that I don't deserve from her. Mm-hmm. And now I feel like I have that and it's like, wow, okay, you know, thank you for giving me this ability. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna hold it. You know, I'm like, I'm walking around like with an egg. Like, yeah, yo, yeah. I'm walking around, I don't want this egg to crack. Right, I'm right. trying to take care of it, so. That's, that's what I'm saying. I just want deep. you to know right now that you're with that's the boyfriend deep. of the century. Yeah, that's deep, bro. You, I wanna be I like know. you. I wanna be like you. I wanna be like you. I can't wait to cut this. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to cut this excerpt, man. We're gonna see the yeah, reaction. Man, sure. Are these tortilla chips for everybody? Yes, they are, my friend. Wow, look, yo. Come record with the boy and you get oh, some tortilla chips. That's crazy. I appreciate it. All right. What do you feel like you've learned? 
I guess I um, I've learned. Uh, I think the greatest thing is I learned. I learned is is compromise. Okay. Because I don't compromise often. You know, yeah. I always tell people in every aspect of my life, I always get what I want. Yeah. Right. And, but um, a lot of times it's like what I want. It's not what I need. It's not what I should get. It's not what's gonna turn out better for me. So I've learned to compromise that. You know, love is 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 that. It's sacrificing what you think is best for the sake of somebody else that you care about. Right. Right. right? And so. It's, it's taught me that. It's taught me that, you know, if you say you love me, then you sacrifice, yeah. right? Because uh, I struggle a lot with commitment. I don't, I don't commit to anything. I don't, com- I don't even commit to, like, uh, you know, food. Sometimes I get bored of the same food. I, get, I tell you, I get, I get bored of the same show. I get bored of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so I'm not committed about everything. So that's my biggest struggle in relationships specific is being committed, yeah. right? So I've learned that, hold up, if I really do value that much, I have to be willing to commit to you and sacrifice what I don't like mm-hmm. for the sake of what we're building together. That's what relationship has taught me the most, which sucks because there's days that I don't want to commit. Period. I want to just leave. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I made I made making a choice, the small choices every day that lead to the bigger commitment. You know. I heard uh, Tim Sykes once say, "Maintenance isn't fun." You know, um, learning something new is isn't fun. Brushing your teeth every day isn't fun. Taking a shower. You know, I'm just trying to yeah, say yeah. that. Maintenance is you. You need you know maintenance in your life, mm-hmm. and these things are fun. But there are things that um, must be worked hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and that's relationships require maintenance. Your car requires maintenance. Your house one day, whenever mm-hmm. we buy a house, dog, or an apartment or whatever, it's gonna require maintenance. Mm-hmm. Things right. that's not fun, and yeah. uh, um, that's what that's what you gotta do for a relationship. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, and. Like, so, so this is the thing. So, you know, you guys are, like, in relationships, right? So now, like, me, me personally, you know, like, now I'm, I'm actually trying to see, like, you know, like, at least, like, in friends, like, you know, like, these guys are actually taking this, like, very like, you know, KP out there, shout out to KP. Um, you know, he oh, has his heaven, girl, yes. right? He has his girl. So, the you know. Financial genius. And, and, I love you, and, my dog. Exactly. And we're seeing these guys, like, you know, like, I'm seeing you guys be shit, seeing this guy get shit. So, you know, it, 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 it comes to, like, me, you know, especially in this discussion, is this, this is a very important thing, which is, Okay, <laughs> got you. I thought it was a phone. Yeah. Okay. So it's a very important thing that, you know, when when it comes down to this, you know, um, you, you, you really got to consider a lot of the things that, you know, like our actions, right? Like being like a, a manly guy and being this alpha guy, right? So with, like in society, you know, for the most part, ma- alphas are considered guys that aren't emotional, right? Guys that like, you know, are, like they lead the way in, in essence, but like, you know, in attitude, it's like, yeah, I'm going to walk with my chest up. You know, if I know y'all shake your hand, if I don't, I'm going to just keep mm-hmm. looking forward, right? You know? But I think that like that whole perception has kind of brought like, this negative thing on guys. Like we need to, you know, like act this kind of way, be this mm-hmm. kind of way. So I think, you know, like a lot of us have this kind of built up tension, maybe whether we recognize it now or not. Like, you know, again, like we, we are not allowed to get emotional, right? So like, for example, you're going through something, right? In society, it looks bad if you're crying, especially to your homeboy, you know what I mean? Because like with homeboy and stuff like that, I, again, mm-hmm. usually, is that about like ah you yeah. know is is it be also like you know like ah you know whatever you fucked up you broke up with a girl ah let's go to the bar let's yeah. go get a drink you know it's almost like we wash away those kind yeah, of things instead of it. right you know like so girls you know they go through a heartbreak you know they call it you know, a bottle of wine they embrace they cry yeah. and you know they go through the pain and stuff you know guys like man whatever bro you know what i'm saying i broke with this girl blah, blah, blah. let's go party let's, yes. let's go to the club yes. let's go to the strip club yes. so we wash away those emotions, yes. and what ends up happening is that they come back. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're always going to be there, lingering. They yeah. come back, and now you kind of have to deal with it regardless. Mm. But, you know, we, we don't take oh, the man. the approach that we should initially because it's like, fuck, I lie to you. Like, tell them my home I'm boys, I'm crying about a I girl. I'm literally know? dealing with a co-worker with the same exact issue yeah. where he broke up with his girl, and now it's like, yo, he's asking all the boys, yo, where are we going? Like, where, like what, what club are we going to yeah, next? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's crazy, right? Like, why, mm-hmm. why, why can't we just, just try to? But it, 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 it's a. If I we think have to you know, it. if you think about it, but it's like a thing, like that I'm saying, like as Bronson, like we're young, it's like a, it's yeah, like it program. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't know, like I don't even, even to think about, it, I don't even know where it went to be, like, like you know. So this, is, I think that what happens with some of us, 
is that, you know, we go through relationships, you get hurt, and now you have this negative perception mm-hmm. of women, mm-hmm. and now you put it like, all women are like this. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Generalized. But you do that not to, not for them, it's more for you. It's a different it's, because mechanism. Exactly. So, because you don't ever want to look stupid again. You don't ever want to look like, oh, man, I was really writing for this girl, I was trying hard on Instagram or whatever, and now she embarrassed me. You don't ever want to look like that guy. Yeah. Right? But you know, so it's a defense mechanism for us. You know what I mean? So we can predict ourselves. It's like, nah, but all oh, these girls yeah. are like the same. Uh, you know, which if in reality, like, yo, there's four, like four billion, three billion women in this world, whatever. Yo, it's ridiculous, right? To think that, oh, they're all cheaters. All of them cheat, right? Or all of them are, are whores, skanks. All of them be lying. All of them, you know, so, you know, it, it, it comes up that, you know, as you grow with this, though, the thing is that the women end up suffering for these kind of things, these kind of things that were in, in, put in until, you know, like, women have to fight for, like, a lot mm-hmm. of rights, a lot of things for them to have certain freedoms and rights or whatever, but, you know, the, this predicament, it hurts, I'm looking at it, it actually hurts both parties, you get me? Because mm-hmm. it kind of keeps us from really connecting with each other, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I think that every guy does need a girl by his side, you get me? Somebody that's going to put him onto something else that doesn't, like, you know, involve all this testosterone, all this manly stuff, you get me? Because you need both parts, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Otherwise, like, imagine those only men, you get me? It'll be this testosterone driven, mm-hmm. like, oh, I gotta be number one type of attitude, you know, and, like, the woman really does come, you know, I, I remember I was hearing uh, Steve Harvey talk, That's crazy. and Steve Harvey kept saying things like, you know, um, you know, if, if you're a man who doesn't have a woman mm-hmm. right by his side, you can be good, you know, but you'll never be great, mm-hmm. you'll never be a great man, right, and I absolutely believe that, you know, just, and, and, you know, again, you guys are, you know, you guys already know how I'll be saying about the whole relationship thing or whatever, you know, these guys are on the other end of the spectrum, but, I do think that you need, like, that somebody, you know what I mean? Whether that's going to be your mom, that's going to be your wife, that's going to be your girl, whatever, you know what I mean? To kind of, like, pick something else out of you, you know what I mean? Other than, like, your machismo mm-hmm. thoughts and, like, where your home is going to stay, you know? That's fine. And, and I think that, you know, like, you need that. But at the same time, you know, we're, like, like, man, it, it, it's kind of hard, I think, at least for guys, at least probably for me to, like, even try to cry. Like, in front of, like, you know, like, I can't, like, me personally, like, if I'm watching a movie and that shit hits me, I'd be like... Then that shit, you know, your eyes start to yeah. water like naturally. Anyway. Right? Well, yeah, I, I, I start fake yawning. Yeah. Yo. Oh, oh man. man. Exactly. It's hard, bro. Yo, when that happens, yeah. I be on some like. Like, it looks like when my husband happens, I'll be like, on some, you know, blinking real fast, and sh- trying to dry that shit out. <laughs> dry, motherfucker. And then, and then, and I be telling myself, like, bro, you better not fucking cry. Uh, I'm telling you, like, bitch. Like when Spider Man died in. Uh, <laughs> oh, when he's crying. Uh, yeah, you're like, you're like, no, nah, like, that shit hits you, you know? And, uh, but, like, think about it, though. But, look, a girl uh, will sit there and she will cry it out. No right? shame. Yeah, no shame. A guy will be like, but especially if you watch it with your boys, yo, you're like, this ain't happening right now. This ain't happening. Because, you know, and none, you know that all of you guys are crying because none of you guys are looking at each other. Exactly. You're all looking straight at the screen like, nah, we ain't about to do this. Nah, nah, bro. You ain't about to catch me. <laughs> yeah, you ain't about to catch me. <laughs> yeah, you about to catch me. <laughs> but, you know, but, like, yo, when you think about that, like, I feel like, I don't know, you you really start to dissect that. like, why, though? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, who, it's, like, like, where did these rules come from? Where it's like, yo, like, you nah, can't. I, I think is is um what happened was women have practice with speaking about their emotions and expressing their emotions because at one point society was that's how norm is right mm-hmm. because for men that wasn't the norm we suck at expressing emotion and ex- and showing emotion right? Right, right so like you ever had a conversation with a dude about how they feel they suck at explaining how they yeah. feel yeah. they suck at explaining yeah. how they feel because they don't know how to have that self-awareness with that yeah, emotional yeah. sense they'll be like no nah, man you know how it is what is no nah, you know how I feel how do you <laughs> like that, so they're like can't be vague about it because they don't even know how to yeah, use the proper true. words they can't exactly. say I'm hurt mm-hmm. I feel vulnerable I feel scared I feel yeah. like, because any of that gives us this false sense of weakness yeah right yeah. And, and it comes from a lot from you know from a society it comes a lot from our cultures mm-hmm. right and so this idea that if, if I voice it then everybody knows it then I'm weaker than the next person next to me yeah. right but in reality I, I think you know someone who's vulnerable someone who's honest is someone who can grow from it yeah. Right. A lot of men repeat broken relationships and broken habits because they never get to the root of it. Mm-hmm. They always deal with the with the symptoms. Oh yeah, that girl hurt me. Yeah. Because that girl hurt me, I build up, I build the walls. Yeah. But then there comes a good girl next time, and the good girl comes, and she's a good girl. She's a keeper. But I'm gonna mess it up because yeah. I believe she's too in my good. head. Why is she good? Yeah, Why I believe she in my good? head that she's cheating on me. Yeah. I believe that she's bad, and you start, you know, you start sabotaging the relationship because you never got to the root of it. That is that you have lack, you have trust issues. Yeah. 
Yeah. You have lack of insecurity. You have you're scared of going through the same pain again, so you don't want to be hurt. You're just a hurt little boy. You know, uh, but we want to admit that. that that type of pain is like failure. Yeah, niggas, we don't we don't like failure. Mm-hmm. So that's why a lot of us. That's why we don't open our business. That's why we don't do what we love. That's why mm-hmm. we work for the man. Mm-hmm. Just what we're talking cause, about. Because we don't want failure. Yeah. We don't want. We don't want to go bankrupt. Yeah. We don't have to. Op- we don't want to have to uh, open a business and then the business close down and you know failure. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we need to learn failure. Yeah, and when you need to learn to failure to, to in our relationship that it's okay. too, or yeah. whatever, all right. It's, yeah, it's okay. It's, okay. it's I, part I, of life. I felt up, you up, like let's let's um try to meet halfway. I mean, and I mean, I gotta tell you, me and Emma, we just we just don't fight. I don't know. I I don't think I've had to. I think Hammer's no. too nice sometimes. Yeah, Hammer's that, too my sweet. Dog, that's just too nice. That's too sweet. Yeah, my it's like, it's like, Hammer's yeah. like, like, first of all, like, she's like, don't do that. I'll be like, no, first of all, not in that all voice. Right. Not in yeah. that yeah. voice. No, no, no. It, it is like that, right? In that voice. No, no, she be like, she'd be like, don't do that. Because yeah. that's so sweet. Yeah, yeah. 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 and, and you're, like, you're like, all right, all right, all right. Whatever you want. What do you want to go eat? What do you want to do? Where's my wallet? Where's my wallet? Exactly. It's like, <laughs> you want something you want to give that, but you yeah. nah, but, nah, but, but I'm telling you, but I think a lot of it is, is the fact that we don't have the practice to really speak out. Yeah. So we can't get to the bottom of our issues. Yeah. And so we end up, you can be 50, you're still a little boy. And yeah. you see it. You see it in the way we express ourselves. You see it in the way we talk about women. Yeah. Right? Like we treat women like they're just some trash. Yeah. And it's, and we end up swallowing our words when we meet the good girls, mm-hmm. cause at that point you're like, damn, we got messed up. I messed up, yeah, you know. Exactly. But but we messed up why? Because we never got to the bottom of what we. Cause we thought that being a man meant, oh, if I'm hurt, I just move on and keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. Instead of being with it and getting you, better. Our generation, I like this, cause um, you guys are thinking outside of the box, um, compared to most people that are probably like 35 right now, cause. Mm-hmm. I gotta tell you, you know, I've 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 hung out with much older guys, and they're still just like that. They're still all the niggas get together, we all go drink, we don't shed a tear, we don't talk about emotion here and all that stuff like that. So, nigga, I, I just, y'all y'all thinking, yeah, my way on, right on the spectrum. Like you know, um, so okay, so this whole you know, in this whole essence, right, of being a man, you know, one of the things that like we probably deal with is like like girls do is body issues right so you know again we have a lot of girls out here who are like they might be fine as hell but they still feel the need to go change something to go adapt mm-hmm. to something right to to a police society right mm-hmm. you know for guys it's like it's like okay for you to have a dad bod mm-hmm. right it's okay mm-hmm. because like yo you're a guy whatever right it's like the girls are the ones are supposed to look at you're a guy who okay, cares it's the same thing as fashion for guys like a fashion thing for guys right now is new. Yeah, you know? it's really coming to mm-hmm. a new thing. Cause, yo, back then, like, especially like with like the old school Hispanic people, like, yo, fashion isn't really like in their mind. Like, it's like functional, mm-hmm. maybe things that look good or whatever. But it's not like, oh, I'm trying to be like all out fresh. You know, like mm-hmm. a handy for an older gentlemen. Yeah, you know I man, and some boots is like good enough type shit. You know, so even that's becoming something new. You know, so you kind of start to look at like these two things, right? And you kind of start to think about, like, yo, why, like, why do we put these certain rules, like, on our own selves? Like, like, so being mad enough is not, is not, for example, being into fashion. If you're into fashion, you're considered, like, somebody Unless you're a gentleman. Right. And, and even if you're a gentleman, it means about putting on, like, yeah, a tux. Yeah. It's not even, you're not a no, fashionista. No, you gotta be, like, the dapper. You gotta be, like, the dapper right. dudes. Right, right. You're not, like, the fashionista for it. You know? No, no. But, you know, for a lot of these little things, we put these, like, limitations on ourselves. You know what I mean? So, I, it, I don't know. It just makes me think that, yo, how, us as, as men, as people, are we, are we acting how we're supposed to act? Are we acting based on the rules that society has put here, like, in, a, in this systemic place where it's, like, you know what I mean? Like, oh... So guys are supposed to act like this? They're supposed to do this? Yeah, I think... And I that's think, what they're yeah. gonna do. I think a so lot of this is of... toxic. Like, you know, you see it in movies. Movies are toxic growing up, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, for sure. You see it in, in culture. You know, people are having a big time now arguing about rappers. How they diminish women. How they just talk about you yeah. know, killing and, and just... And getting drugs. And, whatever. Yeah, yeah. and so it's like, all of these toxic, you know, ideas start becoming the norm. Yeah. Right? Start becoming what is good. And if we're not careful, then we buy into it, consciously or subconsciously, right? And um, we start repeating it. We start saying, you know what? Yeah, dope. All right, so this is how I do it. This is how it's supposed to be done. Get the money, get the check, right? 
and get the other girls and let's say keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. And I, unless you really stop and ponder, why am I doing this? Who told me that this was a man? Mm -hmm. Unless you ponder that, you repeat it and you teach it. Yeah. Yeah, you teach Even it. if you don't say it. Because you know, you tell your kids, oh no, respect everybody. But yet, you know, when you treat your wife, you treat her like she's a slave. Or when you yeah. treat women around, you treat them like the waitresses, you will say something slick to them because yeah, you have no yeah, respect yeah. for them. Yeah. Right? Or the girl, the bartender, you know, you're always flirting with the bartender because, you know, you have no respect for her. Yeah. Right? And, and so your kids are watching, the future is watching. We were watching. Yeah. Right? And so the men of, of, before us have the responsibility. And mm -hmm. us coming up now, becoming men or being men, have the responsibility saying, dude, look, maybe I screwed up, but that's not how things should be done. Yeah. You know? And if we don't verbalize that, then people just follow the same thing. Think about the movies we love, right? Mm -hmm. James Bond, he is the man. Mm -hmm. He doesn't respond to nobody. He doesn't deal with nobody. He takes things. He does things. Takers. We take us, gents. We it's take what we want. Like, like, yeah. So, you know, That's like, right. stuff like that is that we show this masculinity where it's like, men don't give explanations. Men don't give reason. They do what they want, when they want, how they want. That's crazy. That's what we believe in. Yeah. Until we say, hold up, when you say that a lot, that sounds horrible. Yeah, <laughs> it does. The whole James Bond thing, I mean, me and this kid watch all that James stuff. James Bond, bro, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. And that was like I the guy. Mean, it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, this guy, you know, and like, it, it's so true, like, you know, it's so prepping, like you said. Like, it's like in front of us all day, and it's like, uh, again, it's one of those things that, you know, you're not, we're not intentional, but it's almost like, okay, like, whatever, we're programmed like this, so this is how we're going to act. You think dads should be more honest with their sons at For a sure. very early age? For sure. Absolutely, man. You know, Coming to that, like, okay, so for example, like, we have two extremes here, right? You, both of you guys are close to your dads, you, you will say, right? Mm -hmm. You know... Anybody talk about sex like that, though? No, well, Oh, but never. No, not, I think not, not, not sex, not okay. sex, but I'm saying, I'm saying relationship wise, you guys are close. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so, without conversation, I mean, you learn things from your dad without him ever having a conversation about it. Maybe he taught you love just by yeah. hugging and talking with you, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe he okay. taught you understanding by not saying... Yo, I'm under, I'm an understanding person, mm -hmm. but just by literally yeah. showing you that he was understanding, mm -hmm. even when he talked to you. So you know, and and, and we're gonna say two extremes because look, so mind you, you you know you for you haven't always lived with both of your parents at the same time, right? right. You know the, those times you're separated, you know, and it's different. Me on the other hand, you, you know, I've, my parents have always been together, mm -hmm. but with that. I never quite learned how to like. Well, you know, dropping everything. This guy's dropping all the AirPods. And he drops money stuff too. Right, like, like this, bro, if you drop a hundred bucks. Just drop it there, bro. Yeah, if you drop a hundred bucks, yeah, I'm keeping it. Guys. <laughs> you know, so you know when you kind of come to start to think about all these things, um, you know, you're just striking me all this jingle. Now I forgot where I was at. What was I saying? The what relationship saying? idea. Right. So the the whole relationship idea is like. With my parents, the idea is, yeah, both of your parents, so you're learning from both of them. But for me, for example, you know, like I was saying before, like I learned from my dad, serious. Like my dad never hugged me, never kissed me, never told me I love you, never, none of that stuff. So again, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like for me, I didn't get that education mm -hmm. that's nonverbal, you know, mm -hmm. from him as far as like, you know, how should you love? So that's exactly why I feel like even now, like as, you know, whatever, I'm 23, I feel like, damn, like I really just don't know how to love like that. You know what I mean? Like, like it's it's like I just don't know how to really express myself and 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 be vulnerable. You get know I me? Mean? And it's something that like me mentally I have to get I like, get to it because like, okay like sure I could tell you about my fuck ups like I, I I'm not secretive about you know what I mean like like whatever. But me having these kind of discussions is not something I have often. So it's like like man like do I not know how to love? What does this mean for like I I guess like my uh I marriage life or love life future what does it mean for my relationships with everybody else am i showing people that like they have my love like do they not know that because if like for my in my head i'm like yo they sh I, i'm guessing they know that right but you know you kind of start to think Bro, like yo but now like, yeah like now i'm thinking like yo but like do i even know how to show love like, do these people feel that way you know what i mean like so it brings up these things like you know when when for example like like i was saying earlier justin baldoni he talks about these things like okay like you have a platform to talk about these things now, you challenge us, guys, like us, everyday guys, normal guys, to think about it. Like, like so, I, so what, what does that leave you? So, for example, like, what would you say you learned from your dad? Like, now verbally about love and, you know. What what I like about my dad is that he he owned up to his mistakes, you know, always. And, um, I mean, with the amount of kids that my dad's had, he's, 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 he's busted his ass, you know. And he's made mistakes. And he knows that he made those mistakes. So that's what I respect about my, about my dad. You know, it's funny because 
their dads, they don't really know that they made a mistake. You know, some of our great granddads or great 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 granddads used to probably disrespect the shit out of our, out of our out of women. Out of women. Yeah. So um, I guess you know we're progressively trying to learn. I think um, what I learned from my dad. Okay, sorry. You want to make sure it's still recording? I think what I learned from my dad was that um, just try not to make mistakes with your woman. Um, don't disrespect your women. Um, if you're with a woman and you guys are disrespecting each other, then you guys probably shouldn't be with each other. You know, yeah. just you know, your basic stuff. And um, also, to, you know, love your children and all that the example. And so since me and, you know, before we moved here, um, my mom actually told me this whole story about us, um, when we, the whole story of us moving over here because um, we were living in, you know, trailer parks. We were living mm-hmm. with um, family members, you know, yeah. and we didn't even know it. As me and Stephanie, we didn't really know it, but we were jumping in and out of places before yeah. we got. And my mom got approved for this huge blessing, you yeah. know, so we get to live up here and um, um, everything's been going great. But uh, my mom and my dad, they both taught me lessons about um, what I sh- probably should be doing in my relationship. You know, I just think my element, what was missing, my factor, was uh, a woman like Emma, bro. That yeah. was made yeah, to be added yeah, to all the brother today, bro. <laughs> I want to be literally, I want to be like you, bro. Nah, bro. Trust me, it's... I don't know. If, if, if I could... If I hope that all you guys can get this feeling, bro, I, I do. I definitely do hope. Oh yeah, I get, get this thing yeah. that I do with Hannah. I'm about to tear up right now, bro. I hope, man. I'm about to start calling Mason. I love you, I miss you. I hope, man. <laughs> you know, if there was ever a time where I got one step closer to you guys breaking me for this whole life, <laughs> you're going to get a girlfriend, bro. You're going to get a girlfriend, bro. I think it will probably be this moment. Yeah, I don't know, bro. Like, once you find somebody that's, like, your best friend, bro, um... It's, it's cool at that point. After that point, it's just you know, you guys are just chilling. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to fight, and um, um, you guys are just good. You know, just yeah. keep working with each other. And you know who you learn a lot from, bro? Just old people. You talk to old people, like, do you, do you talk to like a lot of 60, 70 year olds people? You ever just chill with them and just listen to what they got to say? Well, the, the women that I work with are all around, you know, certain parts of that age group, right? Mm-hmm. Probably ranging from like late 20s to maybe like. 60s or so, right? Okay. Like, right? So, I'm, I mean, you know, they're all women. A lot of them only got a Wednesday, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, they're joking around, playing around. So, I mean, Look I... that slickness. Yeah, so, oh, you know, yeah. I'm watching yeah, them be like... I'm watching them be like the opposite of what you're kind of saying. I'm watching them being pervs, like, you know, yeah. being like... Saying like some shit that you, you wouldn't really think your mom would say, but it's like... Yeah, like, y'all really fucking around like that? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like, whoa, okay, yeah. cool, you know? Like so, gangsters. Yeah, so that, that's what, at least I experience from, like, older people now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But, like, I mean, and, and I kind of get what you're getting at, like, you know, when you kind of speak to older people, you kind of get this, like, mm-hmm. other kind of wisdom. Yeah. yeah, but, you know, um, let's cut it right here. Part two will continue as some other expert right now. Uh, just because, you know, kind of want you guys, like, feedback right now and opinions, um, if you have any. So, you know... When it comes to this, I, I guess I really just kind of want to start having these conversations and if we can grow the group of guys that we have with the conversations because I think that, you know, learning from one another... Bunch of corny ass niggas. <laughs> and, corny gang. And, but talking about, you know, like all of this, like, you know, emotional stuff that we kind of don't really talk mm-hmm. about, I think it's important for guys to start having. You get me? Because, mind you, like, you guys are the ones raising the next generation when you guys have kids and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So I think it's Ugh, something that, you know. Don't scare me with your kids, bro. It's going to happen, bro. Don't the way, be scary. You're talking about a lot of kids. You're going to have a lot of kids. You're going to have a lot of kids. You're going to have like six kids. No, no, no. Yes. Yeah, you, no. you look it. You look it, bro. No, I just no. can't wait to cut this video. So I, mean, can... I, I really believe you're going to have a cable. Because you don't need it. No yeah, way. Yeah, There's yeah. no way I'm going to be a proud family, bro. No. I ain't Yo, gonna you might have like five family. kids. Luis, yeah, it's, okay. it's okay. Luis Jr. I want I want one girl for him, huh? and I want three dogs. Three dogs or three, three daughters? Three, three, three dogs. Three oh, dogs. I heard daughters. Dogs. Dogs. So, Emma gets a daughter, and then you want three purples. Yeah. So you to eat your daughter. It sounds more like he's gonna yeah, have. He's not. He's not more three pimples. He's not like you have three triplets. He's your boyfriend. Yeah, you got, you got triplets and a daughter. That's gonna happen. Basically. What? Yeah, bro. I see. I, I, look, triplets. We're gonna talk, you. You're not having less than three kids. Yeah, yeah we're gonna talk, bro. I see it in you. 
Yeah, I think you have a lot of kids. Less than three kids? Oh. Yeah, man, I think like, so. If you have two kids, I'll be amazed. Hamas, somewhere her heart is smiling right now, dog, because <laughs> she, she wants them. She wants a big family? Oh. Uh, you know the woman wow. gets what she wants. Yeah. Facts. She's going to tell her, take the pill, oh, take the man. pill. <laughs> All right, guys. So you know, uh, again, uh, leave your comments down below. You know, um, hopefully we get into like, like I said, a bigger group and kind of like get this discussion kind of flowing a little bit, like, like more. It's more like a like the test drive. You know, what I'm saying with the homies real quick. Let's talk about it and see what's up. I I was not ready for this, ladies and gentlemen. So we we've been talking just just shit, honestly. Yeah. Um, I thought we were about talking like about business and money, <laughs> and we talk about relationships. But yeah, that's yeah. cool, man. Um, this is great, man. I I appreciate you guys. Love you, bro. Good show, man. Clap it up. All right, guys, man. So thank you guys once again. Um, forever humbled for anybody that's just clicking on the channel, wherever you came from, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, somebody sent you there. Uh, forever grateful, guys, and humble for your view, uh, for your time, uh, more specifically. Um, and until next time, this is I'm down.